Now for something a bit different. This is a Renault Traffic, but it's been converted by a company called Cozy Campers to be a camper van. It's the perfect little micro home. I've never experienced anything quite as good as this. Uh, it's a long wheelbase Renault Traffic, and from here back, it's a camper van. Actually, two front seats also rotate. So we're gonna have a good look around on the inside of this. So hit the subscribe button. Come with me while we open the magic door to a different house. Okay, and I meant magic door as well. This, this is the interior of the changed alternate version of a Renault Master. Now, as you can see, they're all cupboards along here. These are like uh, marine cupboards, you'd call them. You know, you, you have a lock that comes in here. So when you push the drawer closed, you do that and the drawer locks as well. Vertical ones and uh, small ones, big ones. And then we have an oven, a gas oven in here as well. Um, which funny enough broke, it didn't, the striker's not working anymore. So I couldn't make that work. But that, under warranty, see, it's been built by Cozy Campers, they warranty that as well. Um, on the top, there's a two ring gas burner and a sink as a pump. And uh, we have some controls up here as well, which allow me to be able to turn on the water heater. Uh, so this can actually heat water as well as have running cold water, right? So I'm gonna run the power everything which is a 12 volt sock 12 volt switch over there and a word on that panel um a cbe make this panel here the buttons are too sensitive and what i mean is the mildest touch if you're squeezing by someone or just moving around up here the smallest touch and you're plunged into darkness <laughs> you know at night time in your little van it's a great little panel because it gives you good information tells you where you're plugged in where it's getting its charge from what's running the battery all that sort of stuff word and note that will not run. None of these lights will run when the ignition is on. Um, which means back here at night time, if you're driving with the kids in the back, it's pitch black back here. And there's no way to turn the light on for them because the light's way back there in the boot. Really need some sort of an LED or something in here just to kind of, a reading light for nighttime while driving. Uh, not just while, because uh, this time of the year it gets dark in Ireland from like four o'clock, three o'clock, you know, it starts to get dark on that time. So anyway, um, Really good points. There's a lovely little shelf up here at the very top that I really, really like. It's very useful. And there's space in here for more shelving areas. Now, things will roll around, but still, you get some cloths and bits and pieces up there as well as you need. Um, there's a rather large cupboard here to my side, which is able to carry all your, your kit and equipment. Um, cozy campers put in plates and things. That's not my plates, right? Uh, they put in these kind of dirt, they're plastic, but they're really hard wearing plastic. Um, so they're all gone in as well. Now, I have more storage behind me. But what I want to really remark on, I'm just gonna cut here because I wanna change the camera angle so I can show you something that's actually very, very clever for a camper van. Anyway, let's have a look at the way the bed actually makes up. Okay, so something I really wanted to show you back here is this seat. So in a California, normally, you have to roll the seat forward to make the bed up, uh, which is inconvenient because if anything is here in front or tables or anything, that all has to be removed. So you can slide the seat forward. And this one does slide forward and actually goes a long way forward. So you can go right the way up and all the way back, right? Now, the bit behind me, as part of the bed, actually comes with me when I roll forward. There's a good reason behind that, because to make the bed up, it's just this simple, look. You pull the bench up, the squab, like so, flat. Then you pull this handle, that flats, there's your bed. All done. That's straightforward. This is my camera bike here in the background and some stuff for the windows to black, black them out. But that's it. This bed is a full size double. I can fit on this easily. Tons of room for me. The most comfortable sleep I've had in ages. You have little reading lights up here which have USB ports in them. You can charge your phone. Isn't that and you got these little movable spot lampy things up here and up as well which are very good. They move around and at night time you just switch them off by clicking the switch there. And that's got its own little switch over here, which we can go brighter and turn off. Really brilliant. This bed system is brilliant. And the main reason behind the bed system being so brilliant is because in the morning, you don't need to put the bed away for people to cook and move about. You can make your breakfast, you can have your porridge and have your whatever it is, Weetabix or sausages and rashers or whatever it is you eat for breakfast in comfort in your bed without putting it away. Plus, under this, there's tons of storage. There's more storage down here. There's plenty of places to put everything inside of here. You'll never be short of storage. Actually, it's probably too much because you probably bring too much storage with you. And when you're finished and you're putting the bed away, it's just a reverse. 
You just lift up the back of the seat, which isn't that heavy. And then you lift up the squab, which isn't that heavy. And then it just kind of floats back into position, locks down, and uh, your seat pads are underneath. So you have to lift up to get your seat pads out. But it's, it's effortless. It really is 10 out of 10 for that system of, uh, of seat squabs. It is the best system I've used in any camper van for a bed. And it's the most comfortable bed there is. But there's another little secret in this particular van because there's another bed right above my head, which is another double bed up there. The kids get to sleep up there. Well, they loved it up there, like camping in a tent. And I'm going to show you how that works. Well, a bit more difficult to show you that one, but we'll get there. Okay, I've switched cameras because there's no better way of filming this. So look at this. Here we go. This is the catch to get us up the stairs. So you push the top of that and you pull out all these uh, cables here. So there's no... Um, electric version of this which is cool that's okay i can live without the electrics okay so i've undone those straps there now all we got to do is push with your shoulder oh, like that. and up she rises and then you have a double bed up here as well as downstairs it's absolutely phenomenal it's a big bed as well up here plenty of room i do notice that there's more flappable bits in the canvas than there is in the, in the California. It's not as tight, and I think that's a good thing, actually, in fairness. Uh, it's not bad. This band here, we use as a clothesline, but it's actually to draw the two sides in when you bring it back down again. And you also get another little light up here. Like this one, little LED light, and it has conveniently on it two USB ports. When you want to cook or clean, you can actually stand here with the bed down. The cooker's right there, you know. So I'm standing here between the two bits. Uh, but if when you want to, you can just push this. So as you can see, I can walk around inside of here perfectly. This roof is out of my way and I can stand up full height. Um, I'm at the back of the van, so my legs are actually against the lower seat down here. So as far back as I can go and I can walk all the way forward into full height as well. This is actually the above part, not this part here, but the roof itself is lined. Which I do like, and I'll tell you why I like it, because it creates a very cosy atmosphere up there. It is actually warmer up here than it is in California. Volkswagen could learn from that. That insulated soft padding that's in here manages to make more of a tent cocoon feel to the whole thing. And the floor here is carpeted on both sides. So it absorbs the moisture very well. You never really see any condensation on this stuff. You do on the windows, of course. You don't see it on that stuff outside. Canvas, I do advise to you now, that canvas needs to dry off every once in a while. If you're putting this away and it's damp every single time, you are going to get mold at some point on. There is anti-fungal, anti-mold stuff you can get, but it will mold up around the outside. And it's gonna be a bollocks to clean it. And it's very expensive to replace this, okay? Uh, you would replace yourself, but it's actually quite expensive to do so. Now, how to dry, of course, is just literally get a towel, a chamois, and go around the outside and dry it off and you're putting it away for long term. For short term, it won't be too bad. Once it goes up and down regularly, it doesn't really matter, but when you put it away for winter or whatever, that's a different story. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the front here from the back, which is not advisable, because my legs don't fit in that gap between the gear stick and anything. Ah, yeah, I can get in, right? Now, the big problem with this uh, system is that they wanted to make this a rotatable seat, so a captain's chair effort. And there's a heater underneath it. So what's happened is they've lifted the seat up a little bit in the air. So there's hardly any room between me and the roof. And I mean, I can't even get my fist. When I sit properly in the seat, I'm nearly touching the roof. That's not good if you're tall. I'm 6'1", and I don't sit particularly high, and I have the seat set to its lowest point. It's because they've raised it up a little bit. I'm actually taller than a passenger seat. And I know the complications of putting the heating system somewhere else. Uh, and you have to have rotating seats. But... Uh, there's a better solution here, lads, because in the event of a collision, when the car bounces, I'm going to hit the roof, because uh, it will. It bounces in any sort of major collision. Cars often bounce, and people bounce within the seats, and then they hit the roof here. And that won't be good in the event of a collision. But anyway, so to rotate the seat, you put the car in gear, as you do in California, let the handbrake off, let the car roll, make sure no one's around the car doing that. And you just push down on a little switch here. Let's see back in a bit, if we need it. You push down a little seat, and it begins to rotate and you just keep adjusting the seat a little bit every time till you get it where you want it to be. You have to bring it forward and back and stuff because it's the seats around you. And that's it. Your seat is rotated and you're facing the other way. The same for the passenger seat. You literally just 
find the little switch, turn it down, twist the seat, and the whole lot turns around uh, fairly handy. That'll turn all the way in a minute, and I get it. Yeah, there we go. And now I'm facing into the cabin instead, which is very good, I think. Now, there you see, there's an example of me just pressing buttons here as my elbow went down there to pick up something off the floor. I touched the button, and at night time, we've done it. You end up plunging the whole camper van into darkness, which is wild. Oh yeah, uh, other little tip. Three pin plug over there works perfectly. The USB ports work, but there's two of them over there as well, work perfectly. Uh, the uh, hot water maker works perfectly as well when the car is plugged in. You can set it to do it without plugging it in, but it's you should plug it in. Um, also, a uh, difference from in California is the opening to get upstairs is not here above the driver, it's further back. So this becomes a perfect little shelf for a bit of um, for a few bits of stuff to be thrown up there like your bags and things while the camper is in camper style. So a word on the infotainment system which is here, it's a Renault Dacia one, I've seen it in the Duster, I've seen it in the Renaults as well, not so much in Renaults but it's certainly in the commercial vehicles. Um, it's, it's okay, it's fine, it works, it's functional, it's got sat nav, it's got all that stuff built into it. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto so when I plug in my phone for some reason, it instantly plays Wichita Linesman by Glenn Campbell. Possibly the, look, it's done it again. Possibly the greatest song ever written, but it plays it here every time I plug it in. I can't quite work out what's after happening on my phone, between my phone and this thing, to make it want to play Wichita Linesman. Every time. It's there. Oh, every, every, if I fast forward, right? Every time I get in the car and plug it in, I get the Wichita Linesman. Brilliant song, Glenn Campbell, and, and uh, family that's left, but I don't want to hear it every time. I think it might be something to do with my phone rather than something to do with the actual car, but at least it does play, when you plug it in, it does play directly from the phone, um, but it's not using Apple CarPlay to do that. So when you unplug, you go back to the radio as normal. So a quick word on the boot space, uh, if you can call it a boot, I suppose. So you've got the space underneath here, which Cozy Campers have actually put in a few chairs down here as well, which fit underneath. Uh, they're full-size chairs. You've got an awning on the side of this and the handles back here as well. But also back here is a little shower that you can use to wash your feet with. Um, but they also set a, a full system here where you can put, this was hot and cold, uh, you can put a shower curtain around the outside. So you actually have a shower behind the van if you've been surfing or whatever, you know, so you want to get the salt water off you, been surfing. This phenomenal looking thing is not a movie studio, uh, you know, gun of any kind. It's actually a leg off a table fits down there and the table is underneath here it just comes out and screws on top of it really really good I have no complaints about this vehicle really at all uh, boot space wise and the way things are stored is absolutely brilliant plenty of sto extra storage back here in the back you can control storage for um, your electrical hookups and uh, your electric boxes down here as well and the gas storage is all here too gas cooker all works there's just no complaints here the door is actually quite light as well. I quite like that because there's no seats in it. Like California has seats in the door up there. They've put seats underneath here. We didn't actually use the seats. It's not warm to stay outside. Uh, and this bench bit here stays with that bit there when you move it. Goes back and forward. Brilliant. Look, no complaints. Boot is phenomenal. Okay, thank you very much to Cozy Campers and to Renault for sorting out this one. I think it's an absolutely phenomenal machine. The traffic itself is actually really good to drive. It's nice. It's a nice place to be. The extra height in the seat would be a big problem for me just from a safety perspective. I just wouldn't trust. It's very unlikely I would crash. Very unlikely. I'm very confident in my own ability to do that. But in the event of a collision or a heavy collision from somewhere else, if you bounce in those seats, you're hitting that roof. And that, that is a bit of a problem. Uh, just from a safety perspective. But other than that, I think this is the most phenomenal machine I've tested in a very long time. Very reasonably priced. Renault traffic is great to drive. It's a nice car. It's just a nice place to be. Lovely chilled out vibe in it. And that extra bit of length that's basically the door of this um, really, really, really made a difference. And this very clever bed, which also made a difference because you don't have to move it from where it is to make the bed. It's perfect. Rather than have to slide the whole thing forward and taking up door space and everything, you don't have to do any of that. The door remains completely clear and you can get in and out. It's the best machine I've driven in a very, very long time and lived in for three or four days. And I very much look forward to going back to all the places where we were uh, camping. I have to give a shout out to Inch Getaway, the lovely... Um, Colleen down there opened up her 
campsite for us. We were the only ones who stayed. She was so nice, an Australian woman. She lived in Ireland and she's got a lovely little kind of a camp area with yurts and things. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen all of that. Um, those yurts were phenomenal, but we actually used this down there and she had the campsite closed and she said that she'd open it up because it was because we wanted to come down to see what these yurts were about. We stayed the night down there. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Eco-friendly, compostable toilets and, and uh, all coming from wells and the water. It's just a phenomenal place. I strongly advise you to go down and have a look at what she does. Class act. And we also stayed in Tipperary, just outside Tipperary town. There's a campsite there which looks straight at the Galtee Mountains. Absolutely brilliant view every single morning. Bit of a rip-off price. Have to say 28, 30... No, 38 quid a night was just a ridiculous price for someone who's half empty, you know. Really, it could encourage a lot more people down there. And everything costs money after that as well. So, beautifully clean, really well kept. Uh, Wi-Fi available there as well, which is quite nice. But uh, links to these places are down, in my, down below in the comments if you want to see them. Um, we stayed there two nights. He discounted the price the second night, but actually we ended up paying for pool. Everything costs a euro. The jukebox is a euro or 50 cent or something. The pool is a euro. Table tennis was free. Uh, but if it was busy, you're not going to get anywhere near that table because it's the only thing in it. Um, showers were free, but the hairdryer cost money. And, you know, everything costs money after it. And I thought the money was a bit expensive for what you got. But the view is outstanding. Outstanding. Looking at those mountains right up in front of you every morning. You got up, crack it on to have a look at these mountains and watch the sunrise. It was just incredible. Strouded in cloud the whole time. Brilliant. There were the two campsites we kind of stayed for the three or four nights we stayed out. Um, we didn't stay much else, but a uh, huge, again, a huge thank you to, to uh, Colleen down in Cork. She did such a phenomenal job opening up for us and uh, just allowing us run wild in the place. This wild with Doris the pig and uh, the chickens and and Tiger the dog and the three-legged dog that I can't remember the name of. Just, just a brilliant experience. Really, really good. We were the only ones in the campsite. Uh, it was closed technically, um, so she just opened for us. So thank you very much to Colleen. Anyway, hopefully that's enough information for you about the camper van. Buy it. If you're even considering to buy a camper van, look at this one. This is definitely the one I would choose today, right now. I've literally looked up all kinds of websites to see if I could even remotely afford something like this, but I can't. Uh, the, uh, forget about new, even used, these things fetch quite a price. Phenomenal machine. You could drive it every day as a car, or you could keep it and run it as a van, because when this slides all the way forward, there's tons. It is a van. Um, so it's absolutely phenomenal. So I definitely recommend this vehicle for you to check out. Hit the subscribe button. Check out the link list of links down below for uh, ways to support the channel. It's very important you support the channel if you can, please. It's really, really important. Uh, but hopefully you will hit the subscribe button at least. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side.